On October 9, 2025, Beijing made a move that quietly but decisively rattled the foundations of the global chip industry. China's Ministry of Commerce unveiled a new framework of export restrictions on rare earth materials, and while no company was named outright, the message was unmistakable. The policy struck at the heart of ASML, the Netherlands-based firm whose lithography systems enable nearly every advanced semiconductor produced today. China dominates close to 90% of global rare earth refining, and these materials are not niche resources but essential building blocks of the world's most advanced technologies. ASML, the sole manufacturer of extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, relies almost entirely on these Chinese processed materials for components that cannot be substituted at scale. Under the new rules, any product that includes as little as 0.1% Chinese origin rare earth content must receive an export license from Beijing. The scope went even further with the application of a foreign direct product style rule, meaning that goods manufactured outside China but incorporating Chinese rare earths are still subject to Chinese approval before they can be shipped anywhere. In effect, China extended its regulatory reach across the entire global semiconductor supply chain. This exposed a critical weakness at ASML. Each EUV system, priced at up to $200 million, contains multiple rare earth compounds that must meet extremely high purity standards. The optics used to concentrate extreme ultraviolet light depend on cerium oxide refined to 99.9% .9 purity, a level that only Chinese facilities reliably achieve, while U.S. producers fall far short of that benchmark. The machines also rely on powerful magnetic assemblies made from neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium, with more than 10 kilograms of permanent magnets embedded in each unit. These magnets can represent over 30% of certain subsystem costs, and China supplies more than 90% of the world's rare earth permanent magnets. ASML's internal experiments with alternative materials proved unworkable, pushing manufacturing costs up by roughly 40% while reducing system performance by nearly a third. According to the company's finance leadership, ASML holds only a limited stockpile of rare earth inputs, enough to keep production running for a few months at most. If licensing approvals slow or are denied, monthly output could drop by 15 to 20 machines, translating into potential revenue losses exceeding 3 billion annually. The consequences would not be confined to one company. ASML's tools are indispensable to TSMC, Samsung, Intel, and every major logic and memory producer, which in turn supply chips to Apple, Nvidia, AMD, Qualcomm, and countless other firms. Any disruption at ASML would ripple outward affecting the entire technology ecosystem. Analysts have warned that manufacturers relying on rare earth-based chemicals and fabrication and equipment builders dependent on rare earth magnets face the highest exposure. This confrontation was the result of a steady escalation. Throughout 2024 and 2025, Washington pushed the Dutch government to tighten restrictions on ASML's sales to China, blocking shipments of EUV tools and later extending limits to advanced deep ultraviolet systems. From Beijing's perspective, these actions were part of a coordinated effort to choke off China's technological progress. Tensions intensified further after the U.S. Commerce Department expanded its export controls on September 29, closing loopholes by targeting subsidiaries majority owned by sanctioned firms. China's response was strategic rather than symbolic. If access to advanced manufacturing tools could be weaponized against China, then access to the raw materials enabling those tools could be weaponized in return. Alongside the October 9th announcement, Beijing introduced approval requirements for equipment and materials used in producing logic chips at 14 nanometers and below, as well as high-layer count memory, directly pressuring the most advanced manufacturing nodes. ASML and its partners immediately began searching for alternative supply routes. But replacing China's rare earth ecosystem is not a short-term project. Establishing new mining, refining, and magnet production capacity typically requires a decade or more and massive capital investment. Southeast Asia accounts for only a small fraction of global refining, while U.S. production costs are several times higher than China's. International energy and resource agencies have consistently noted that China holds dominant market shares across nearly all critical minerals, a position that has strengthened rather than weakened over time. In rare earth magnets specifically, China's share has climbed from about half of global output two decades ago to well over 90% today. At the end of October 2025, the situation appeared to ease, at least temporarily. During a meeting in Busan, South Korea, Presidents Donald Trump and Xi Jinping agreed to a limited trade pause. 
Official statements indicated that China would temporarily halt the global rollout of the October 9th export controls and issue broad licenses for several key materials, including rare earths, gallium, germanium, antimony, and graphite. This suspension was set to last one year, through November 2026. In return, the United States agreed to delay implementation of its expanded subsidiary rules and freeze additional punitive tariffs. However, the fine print revealed that only the newest restrictions were paused. Earlier licensing requirements introduced in April 2025 remained in force, particularly those affecting military and defense supply chains. China did not abandon its leverage, it merely set it aside. Subsequent reporting showed that negotiations over rare earth exports continued weeks after the truce, underscoring that the underlying dependency remained unresolved. Beijing's position rests on decades of deliberate industrial policy that consolidated control over mining, refining, magnet manufacturing, and downstream components. Today, Chinese entities dominate nearly every stage of the high-performance magnet supply chain, allowing regulatory decisions to function as powerful geopolitical pressure points. Western governments have begun responding, but progress is slow. The U.S. Department of Defense's investment in MP materials and long-term offtake agreements represent meaningful steps, yet experts agree they will not deliver near-term independence. Europe faces similar delays, with domestic production targets set years into the future, and overseas projects still scaling up. ASML has also committed billions of euros to secure future supply for its next-generation lithography systems, but financial investment alone cannot replicate an integrated industrial ecosystem overnight. The broader lesson is clear. China has shown that it can rapidly endanger the global semiconductor supply chain by acting at a single choke point. While diplomatic agreements may offer short-term breathing room, the structural imbalance remains. For the foreseeable future, every advanced chip relies on materials processed in China, and until alternative supply chains mature, that dependency will continue to shape global technology, geopolitics, and industrial strategy. One of the most sensitive issues for the Netherlands lies in the fact that the majority of Nexperia's manufacturing footprint, well over two-thirds, is based inside China, primarily in industrial hubs such as Dongguan and Shanghai. When Dutch authorities stepped in to limit control over the company, the response from Beijing was swift and forceful. China imposed restrictions on exports of power semiconductors and other vital components destined for Europe. Almost overnight, production at Nexperia's Chinese facilities collapsed falling from near full capacity to barely a fraction of normal output. European buyers were suddenly cut off from critical chips with no short-term alternatives available. The shockwaves spread rapidly across Europe's industrial core. Major German automakers, including Volkswagen and BMW, were forced to slow assembly lines, absorbing losses that reached millions of dollars per day, while delivery timelines for premium vehicles stretched dramatically. In less than two weeks, Europe saw more than $3.5 billion wiped from industrial output, and thousands of workers were placed on temporary leave or reduced schedules. The crisis exposed a hard truth. Europe's industrial strength is deeply vulnerable due to reliance on strategically sensitive suppliers operating under foreign control. Nowhere was this vulnerability more evident than at ASML. The Dutch firm's lithography machines, essential for producing the world's most advanced semiconductors, depend heavily on materials sourced almost entirely from China. Components such as ultra-precision cerium optics, high-performance permanent magnets, and magnetic levitation systems lack realistic substitutes outside Chinese supply chains. Efforts to replace these materials led to massive cost increases and sharp performance losses, revealing just how exposed Dutch high-tech manufacturing has become. With China overseeing nearly all global rare earth processing, its regulatory decisions effectively function as a geopolitical pressure tool capable of undermining Western technological leadership. New compliance rules further tightened the situation, requiring strict end-user transparency and individual approvals for equipment tied to advanced chip manufacturing. Any delay in licensing could significantly reduce ASML's production capacity, potentially costing the company billions of dollars each year. While Europe struggles with these constraints, China continues to move forward at remarkable speed. Chinese institutions and technology giants have achieved breakthroughs once dismissed as unrealistic by Western analysts, including progress toward advanced EUV lithography capable of fabricating chips below the 7 to nanometer threshold. This progress has immediate consequences inside China. Major firms such as Huawei, Xiaomi, 
Alibaba, Tencent, and BYD are pouring enormous resources into domestic innovation, artificial intelligence, and homegrown hardware ecosystems. Restrictions on NVIDIA exports have only accelerated this momentum, creating opportunities that local manufacturers are racing to exploit. As a result, China is rapidly constructing end-to-end -end supply chains designed to function independently of Western technology. The situation highlights a fundamental shift in global power dynamics. Technological dominance is no longer defined solely by who makes the most advanced products, but by who controls the raw materials, software platforms, and manufacturing infrastructure behind them. The United States and Europe now face a difficult calculation. Continued pressure on China may hasten its push toward full technological independence, permanently reducing Western influence over global supply chains. The impact extends beyond factories and trade balances. Advanced manufacturing increasingly demands expertise in materials science, chip architecture, and high-performance computing. Countries that fail to modernize education and workforce training risk falling behind in knowledge as well as production. Analysts increasingly argue that conventional trade deals are insufficient to resolve this standoff. Discussions are emerging around entirely new international frameworks designed to stabilize access to strategic resources. The choices being made today will determine how global industry is structured for decades. Control over critical inputs has evolved from a commercial advantage into a cornerstone of national power. China's strategy sends a clear signal. Mastery over essential materials and technologies shapes the future of innovation. Through its command of rare earth processing, rapid advances in lithography, and expanding domestic chip capabilities, China has placed Western economies in an unfamiliar and uncomfortable position. Meanwhile, China continues to strengthen its technological position despite sustained efforts by the United States to slow its progress. Alongside breakthroughs in chip manufacturing, Beijing has reinforced its grip on rare earth markets, widening the gap that Western nations are struggling to close. Recent announcements of new laser-based immersion lithography systems, achieving significantly finer resolution than previous generations demonstrate steady progress, even under heavy sanctions. Then came a moment that truly unsettled the global semiconductor industry. In early 2025, Chinese researchers revealed a domestically developed EUV lithography system, capable of producing advanced chips without reliance on ASML. For decades, ASML's machines formed the backbone of high-end semiconductor manufacturing for companies like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. While Western governments viewed this dominance as a strategic shield, China had been quietly preparing for a future without foreign suppliers. Starting years earlier, massive state funding fueled secretive research programs, drawing tens of thousands of engineers from firms such as Huawei and SMIC into specialized laboratories across China. Their objective was absolute self-reliance. That effort culminated when a relatively unknown company demonstrated a fully functional EUV system capable of creating sub-nanometer features on silicon wafers. This was not a laboratory experiment but a working production system, verified by independent experts and real manufacturing results.